Hello everybody, this is uh, General Yanis, and today in Death Car Tactics I'm looking at the Land Raider, uh, let's say Chaos Land Raider or Death Car Land Raider, and is it, um, very, it's, is, is it uh, just a, a point sink for, for our army? So let's, uh, let's take a look. So today the last day of the, the month of March, and um, first of all a, a very big thank you for all the good feedback on the 2000 point battle report and the post battle al analysis. I was really happy to uh, hear your comments and uh, it's nice that you appreciated the, the short format and, and could see some of the battles, uh, so I, I really enjoyed that. So I wish uh, that the restrictions uh, soon will be lifted to be able to play more and try different lists and maybe bringing you more reports. Uh, I will be taking a short Easter break, uh, so no videos over this weekend. And uh, on the week after Easter, I already have a, a few uh, 650 points Crusade battles lined up to try the new uh, rules in the Crusade. And uh, maybe I'll, I'll make some small battle reports of that following up on, on Death Card on Crusade. So in this video, as I said, I will be reviewing the Death Card Land Raider. Looking at the stats and weapons, uh, the buffs and synergies, the durability, and because also it has a transport capability, I will also be reviewing those. And uh, it's interesting, when I looked, uh, <laughs> the first time I saw the Land Raider, I immediately thought of the First World War, or at that time, Great War, uh, the, the first tank. So I guess this is an even older design than the Rhino, uh, so with a, with a side sponsors, but of course this was not last cannons back in the days. So are uh, the, the Death Card Land Raiders, are they worth their staggering 285 base cost? Let's, uh, let's take a look. So let's start with the base stats of the Land Raider. So the base cost is 285 points and it's, uh, it has a, it's a model with um, a lot of wounds. So it starts with 16 wounds and therefore it has brackets. Uh, so in the, in the first bracket it can move uh, 10 inches. It has a 6 plus weapon skill, so it's not a melee option, let's say. The ballistic still, the skill starts at 3 plus and is degrading down to 5 plus when there are only 1 to 4 wounds left. And between 5 and 8 wounds, it has a 4 plus ballistic skill. Strength 8 and toughness 8, so this is a good toughness and um, yeah, a tough, a tough vehicle to bring down. 16 wounds, as I said, and plenty of attacks, but it's difficult to use them, of course, with a weapon skill of 6 plus. So six attacks, uh, D6 attacks and D3 attacks as it is degrading. Nine leadership and a two plus save, and it doesn't have an inval save. And it bears the contagions of Nurgle, so it spreads the minus one toughness contagion, and it has an explode on, on a six uh, before the units disembark, and the units, uh, enemy units within, or no, the units within six inches of the, of the land raider get D6 mortal wounds. So it can deal some mortal wounds and maybe we can use the, the forced explosion if, if we need it with this one. So it has the contagions, but it doesn't have disgusting resilience, which is a pity to further improve uh, the, the good toughness and the high number of wounds. If we look at the keywords, it's a vehicle, bubonic astartes, a transport. It, it has the death card and plague company. Uh, keywords of course and then it has the interesting machine spirit keyword and there is a stratagem specifically for a machine spirit unit where and this keyword is only in one of our units so they could have just written land raider basically it has the smoke screen keyword allowing also to use a stratagem to to pop smoke chaos nurgle heretic astartes etc the standard uh, death card uh, keywords here and um, it has also a transport capacity, uh, 10 Plague Company Bubonic Astartes Infantry, for example, Plague Marines, and um, Terminators and Possessed can also be transported, but these, mo these models take the space of two. So basically, you can have five Terminators or, or let's say five Possessed. So unfortunately, you can't put 10 Possessed, for example, in the, in the Land Raider. If we look at the, the weapons for the Land Raider, uh, they are quite fixed. So the Land Raider has two times a twin last cannon. So uh, basically the last cannon is a, yeah, the twin last cannon is a heavy two, uh, 84 inch range, strength nine, AP minus three, and the, and the variable damage D6, which can be very high and it can also be very low when you, when you most need it. Uh, so basically with two times the twin last cannon, the, the, the Land Raider will be shooting four last cannon shots, which is, which is quite okay. 
Uh, it also has a twin heavy bolter, uh, giving heavy six uh, uh, shots at 36 inch range with strength five, AP minus one, and damage two. So this is quite a good anti, let's say, marine infantry, space marine two wound type of infantry weapon with a high, with a strength five. Uh, on top of uh, so this is basically the standard configuration. You can't really change anything on the main cannons. So the only thing you can do is you can um, you have options to add a bit more weapons. You can add a havoc launcher for five points, which is a, a, a cheap blast weapon. Let's say heavy D6 shots, blast, strength five, AP zero, damage one, or you can add uh, w uh, f some combi weapon on top uh, for, for five or ten points. You can add a combi bolter, etc. I've not looked so much into those as we are already at a very hefty cost of 285 points. So as I said, no disgusting resilience unfortunately, but high number of wood, toughness eight, four last cannon shots and six heavy bolter shots, and we can add a combi weapon or, or havoc launcher, and it can also transport infantry. So looking at the, the damage uh, that it can do uh, in long range shooting, let's say 24 inches and, and further back, not point corrected here. So this is the expected damage uh, for, for, the, for the Land Raider. So the, the orange here, we see two times the twin last cannons, the damage they are expecting to do versus various targets. So if we're looking, for example, at a Gladiator a tank or a Lehman Ross or something, it should be able to do five wounds on that with the four shots. The, the dark blue is the twin heavy bolter. So this one can do a little bit, it's, it's, it's better against the two wound type of infantry and it's not so efficient uh, for, for, the, for vehicles and tough targets. And the, the light blue is the combined damage output of the two weapons together. So four last cannon shots and the six heavy bolter shots. And we see that uh, for most of the targets uh, we will be doing let's say four to six wounds and a bit more here for the for the weaker weaker uh, targets here uh, but around yeah so the total damage will be four to six damage uh, wounds versus most target analyze and not point corrected uh, and normally I, I because the point cost as i said is so high to begin with i wouldn't add extra weapons on this but if you want to add something then the havoc launcher i think for five points is probably the best option to get also a blast weapon here, and it's better than a five point uh, combi bolter, for example. So, here the yellow line shows the combi bolter. In this range, it's only firing two shots. The Havoc launcher can shoot from far, uh, and it can do uh, it, it does a little it does a little bit better than the, than the combi uh, the, the combi bolter here. Uh, for for horde type opponents, it would it would be doing a little bit more if there was like a big big bunch of cultists, etc. So uh, comparing now the, the damage output uh, corrected per 100 points, uh, and, and we can see here the Land Raider, it can do point correct around two wounds on average per 100 points across all the targets in the previous page. At point blank, it can do a little bit more because then the, the opponent will be uh, minus one toughness in, in melee. Uh, and in melee, it cannot do so much, but it can shoot at point blank with no uh, penalty uh, because it's a bubonic Astartes vehicle with inexorable advance. So, uh, and then if we compare, uh, yeah, if we add the Havoc launcher, we get a little bit, a little bit better, um, a little bit better damage output, but we can't shoot it in point blank. So the Land Raider with its high point cost does not come out high uh, on, on the Hall of Fame, let's say on the damage per hundred points for Death Card units. Uh, so it comes here below the Defiler and Hellbrood and the uh, the Ferdid Blotro with the Blight Launcher and of course Contemptors and and the Plague Scroller etc. But uh, interestingly enough, it's 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 on par with the Mephitic Blight Holder at this range at the 24 inch range, uh, like ranged Plague Plague Marines with Bolter, uh, Blight Launchers and uh, Plasma Plasma Guns on average. Uh, but at shorter range, it falls further behind the rankings because, yeah, the, 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 some other units can shoot more things at 12 inch range. Uh, and, uh, and it's, of course, not a melee unit. It cannot do so much in melee, but at point blank, it doesn't suffer from the minus one to hit with heavy weapons because it will get inexorable advance and it benefits from the minus one toughness contagion. 
But all in all, if you if you just want to add a lot of wounds to the opponent from long range, then the land raider is not your optimal or most efficient choice. So some synergies or some strategies, abilities with other death card units and rules. Of course, it's not a core unit, so it cannot benefit from auras. A lot of most of the new auras are for core units. It's not a demon engine, so there are a lot, there are a few stratagems and and etc. We can use with demon engines, so the, we can't use them on the land raider. But it's it is bubonic as starter, so it can score some secondaries, etc. And if we look at the the stratagems, as I said, because it has the machine spirit, we can use unclean machine spirit in the command phase. Um, and, and, and basically the model is assumed to have full wounds remaining for purpose of de determining uh, which profile it's using. And basically it's, this is only for the land raider, but this can be quite good uh, even if it's bracketed, then we can, uh, we can use it to, um, to get our move to the high movement and we can always shoot with a three plus for this uh, strategy. So quite interesting if you have the land raider to consider using that if it's bracketed. And then putrid detonation, like any other vehicle, it would cost two command points to make it auto explode if it's really surrounded by high value targets and you want to do uh, D6 damage, maybe it could be situationally interesting. And then the foul smoke screen, it has the smoke screen keyword and in the opponent shooting phase, you can pop the, 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 the smoke screen and protect the 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 land radar from minus one to hit, making it more uh, durable. Uh, and if it transports any valuable um, content, then you maybe want to use this uh, to, to, to save it. And then contagions uh, and, and relics, uh, the, of course, the land raider, as many other units, will, of course, uh, benefit from enemy units potentially being in the contagion range of other death card units. And for example, ferric blight for plus one AP to the weapons, typically not so useful for the last cannon but the twin heavy bolter could benefit and then uh, for example the inexorable relic the leech force casket for a character to kill an enemy model and select an inexorable vehicle that uh, regains one lost wound but otherwise not super many um, <clears throat> synergies here so if we look at the durability uh, the land raider durability not point corrected here uh, we can see the number of shots uh, it takes to kill a, a land raider from a variety of, uh, of weapons. Here, not so strong anti-infantry weapons, and here, more anti-vehicle and, and more threatening weapons like entropy cannons, last cannons, and melta guns here. Um, and the land raider's 2 plus armor save, the toughness 8, and the 16 wounds make it able to take a lot of fire, especially here for, for low Low, uh, yeah, anti-infantry, anti-personal type weapons, you, you, they need a lot of shots to even do something on the land raider. But of course, it cannot take, uh, it cannot sustain very heavy fires forever, but it could take, for example, um, here, so, so this is without the smoke screen. If you use the smoke screen, you can take many more shots here. So in combination with a smoke screen stratagem, it could survive, uh, let's say 10 eradicators firing 20 metal shots will not quite take it down uh, at 24 inches, but if they were at, at half range, they would be able to take it down. So of course it would have been nice for it to have this casting resilience. Here we can see it compared to some other transports, the Chaos Rhino, of course, much, much weaker model, let's say 80 points only, but it cannot take so many heavy shots and the Terax drill cannot take um, as many shots as the as the Land Raider. Um, so although expensive, uh, this this profile and the smoke screen and the toughness eight and 16 wounds should be able to protect the, the models it's transporting so they can disembark uh, without being rolling for emergency disembarkation. So at least it has that going for it. If we look at the durability per point, so how many shots is it able to take per 100 points, let's say, and then reference to the other uh, death card vehicles, uh, we see that the Land Raider, because it's, yeah, again, very costly, it's not as durable per point, at least. We're not putting as many points, uh, wounds on the table, and the shots, we can take as many shots of the, on the table per 100 points as with some other options, but, but still, 
to take down a single model requires, as we saw, a, a, a hefty amount of shots. Finally, uh, let's look at the Land Raiders transportation capabilities. Uh, so basically, it can transport 10 normal infantry models like the Rhino, but uh, for a higher, much higher cost, but of course, also more securely, as I, as I said, it's not as uh, if when we drive forward the Rhino, uh, there is a high chance that it will blown up. If we drive forward the Land Raider, it will not, uh, it will not be so easy for the opponent to take it out. And if they do, they, they would have wasted, uh, spent a lot, of, a lot of shots on that. It could have been helpful if it had, let's say, a higher transport capacity to allow for a full Plague Marine squad and support characters, for example, um, because you're paying a lot of points, it would be nice to be able to, to, to pull a, a hefty combo when you disembark. If you don't want to use it to transport the normal infantry models, you can transport five Terminators, but our Terminators already can deploy through Deep Strike. Uh, if, you, if your opponent is typically good at screening off the table, it could be a way to deliver them rather safely in turn two, so they can make a charge, the Terminators. So here, for example, uh, in the first in the first turn, the Land Raider moves 10 inches. It doesn't um, it doesn't advance because we would like to use its its cannons to shoot. And then uh, at turn two, having survived uh, probably some shots, the Terminators disembark three inches and move five inches away, bringing them 18 inches away from the start. So we should be somewhere halfway here uh, in the in the middle of, of of between between the center line and the opponent's deployment. So uh, let's say with a realistic charge threat of seven inches, maybe we can roll higher. We we could be threatening something uh, just inside the enemy's deployment zone and maybe have a better charge than if we deep strike and we needed a nine inch charge. So maybe it could be five Blight Lords, or maybe a Death Shard and a character. But again, if it's blowing up and you are starting losing this type of models for, for once, then it's it's not very, very useful. But it could be an alternative way to bring Terminators up the board. And it can also transport Possessed that don't have Deep Strike ability. But unfortunately, this is also re restricted to only five models. And maybe it could be that uh, the Possessed are protecting the land raider from melee and getting bogged down but it's yeah i think it's a bit if if you at least you could take 10 possessed the maybe it could be uh, a bit more interesting so some final thoughts and summary i think at the point cost of 285 points the land raider is definitely a hard sell uh, to try to include uh, and convince somebody to to take to the death card army lists as a cannon platform, it can do some long-range damage, uh, both with anti-vehicle uh, last cannons and anti-infantry uh, heavy bolt, twin heavy bolter, but it's not as efficient per point as other options like the Plague Scrollers or Defilers, Hellbrute Dreadnoughts, etc., the Contemptors. Um, per point, it's equivalent to a Mephitic Blight Hauler at the longer range, but it's not as, a, as good at shorter ranges and it doesn't do so much in, in melee. As a, but it's, it, it, it has this syndrome of being a bit schizophrenic. You have, you have a platform for guns, but you're also transporting things. Uh, but as a transport, it's quite sturdy with the 16 wounds and toughness 8, an ability to pop smoke screen, but lacks this disgusting resilience that would make it even more uh, interesting. Uh, it should be able to deliver its content safely versus most opponents, against, uh, un unless the opponent really focuses a lot of firepower to, to take it out in turn one, um, but it's limited that in transporting the same amount of uh, Plague Marines that you could do in a Rhino. Uh, of course, it can also, as I said, transport Terminators and Possessed, but then only five models. So that's also a bit restrictive. The Terax drill can transport more models and deep strike them and add, and add more firepower, a short range and, and become a melee, th melee threat. Uh, so, maybe the, the the land raider i would i would hope it could come down in cost uh, it has this yeah it has this schizophrenic thing of being both a tank and a transporter um, so if you really need a good tank uh, you would get something else and if you really needed a better transport or a cheaper transport you would probably get something else so it doesn't excel in any of these things 
but at least it's not like a tin can <laughs> like the rhino waiting to explode it should be able to take something so maybe it could be if you are playing more fluffy and you like the model you can use it as a transport for possessed or blight lord terminators after you disembark the blight lords maybe make a charge or something then the land raider can fall back and provide uh, provide anti-vehicle shooting and, and other shooting so um, this uh, concludes the, the video what do you think about the land raider and have you have you made your land raider look death guard uh, have you been using the land raider i don't have any land raider in my in my collection um so and and now i'm not planning <laughs> to get one let's say but it could be interesting to hear your thoughts and experience uh, so if you like this video please press like and leave some comments um, always appreciate it and uh, if you want to support uh, my efforts and the work uh, going into making all this analysis please visit my patreon page and uh, and support support the channel and get some access uh, and some roadmaps there and uh, maybe also some a bit exclusive com content uh, and uh, with these words uh, general yanis is signing out stay safe out there and bye bye